it's hot. Hey everybody, hey y'all, how you doing today? Look what I've got. This is gonna feed at least 10 people. And this is called Mom's Comfort Chicken. Mom's Comfort Chicken. And this is David's mother's recipe and she's been making it for at least 40 years. And it's in my cookbook called Happiness is Homemade. Let me get over here and let me show you about this. This is delicious. It's a chicken dish that makes its own gravy and it has bacon in it, it has dried beef in it, and chicken. Okay. This is hot out of the oven and this is called, what I just said, Mom's Comfort Chicken. Hold on, let me set this hot plate down. Okay. How are y'all doing today? Y'all need a new recipe? If you like getting new <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, uh, let me talk to you about Mom's Comfort Chicken. Now, different people call this different things. For years, I just called it uh, chicken dried beef is what I called it because those were two of the recipes in it. But this is called Mom's Comfort Chicken and it's on page 53 of my book, Happiness is Homemade, y'all. 53 of Happiness is Homemade. And let me show you this cute picture. This is David's mom and dad, and this is his sister Phyllis, and this is David, when they were little bitty back in the day. So anyway, this is mom's comfort chicken. And if you'll notice, I wrote a little bit on mine because I write in my cookbooks. If you write on your cookbooks and, and write little hints and leave hints for yourself, give me a thumbs up, because I do too. Uh, because after you cook stuff so often, you know that you need to add a few details. And the few details I'm gonna add just tells you how to cook it in the crock pot and tells you also how to cook it at a, at a faster pace, okay? So anyway, let's talk about what's in this comfort chicken. You need dried beef. Y'all, this is over there where the canned chicken is and things like this, dried beef. It's just called dried beef and it's sliced. You're going to need some paprika. You're gonna need two cans of cream of mushroom soup. You're gonna need some bacon, okay? And this is smoked bacon because y'all that smoked adds some great flavor. Then you're gonna need some chicken breast. Now this calls for, uh, you know, like eight chicken breast, but I'm gonna tell you through the years, I have decided, I got to noticing that people were not eating all their chicken because the chicken breasts were too big. So what I do now is cut them into smaller pieces so that we can all have a little piece of this with the bacon and with the um, dried beef on our mashed potatoes. And you know, then it goes well that way. But this is really easy. And if you do it with the really large chicken breast, you're gonna crank your oven up to 300 and cook it for three hours. But if you do it with smaller pieces, you do 300 for two hours. Or you can put it in your crock pot, which is what I like to do a lot of times, but today I'm showing you the oven method. In the crock pot, if you put it on high, it's about four hours, and if you put it on low, it's six to eight, or while you're going to work. But ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have your um, thermometer, uh, your meat thermometer, I, I really think it's a good thing to have because if you don't, then you might overcook your meat. Nobody likes a dried chicken. So if you like good, juicy chicken with wonderful gravy, give me a heart because y'all, I love this recipe. It's delicious and it feeds a lot of people. So if you're doing your chicken and you're gonna temp your chicken, chicken is done at 165 degrees, okay? 165. Otherwise, you gotta do it the old fashioned way, and which is what I do too when I don't have my thermometer, and you just kinda poke it, make sure there's no juice running out that's bloody. The juice has gotta be clear running out. Okay, enough of that. Let's just get going with this recipe. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get a casserole dish. This is mine. All right, and I'm gonna spray it with oil. So I've sprayed it with oil. That's easy. The next thing we're gonna do is do something with this dried beef. And y'all, there's this is so cute. This is a little drinking jar in here. So when you get through with the dried beef, you got a little drinking jar left. I know, isn't that cute? That's the cute part. 
Okay, and y'all remember those jelly jars, peanut butter jelly jars and stuff that we used to get, and we would have a, a jar to drink out of when, or a cup to drink out of when we got finished? If you remember those days, give me a thumbs up, because I sure do. So what we're gonna do right now is make sure you can see this, and I'm going to line the pan with the dried beef. And you just kind of put it up next to each other. Y'all, this dried beef adds the best flavor to this meal right here. You just can't beat it. And a little bit goes a long way because it's a rich meat and it also has salt in it just like the bacon does. So I don't add extra salt to this because it all cooks out when you're cooking it from the bacon and from this. So okay, I've lined my pan with the dried beef. The next thing we're gonna do is work on the chicken. Well, and the bacon, so I need to open my bacon. Now, through the years, I've learned a, a few secrets, and one of them is that I'm going to half the bacon. I'm gonna cut that bacon in half after I get it open. Are y'all doing okay today? I hope you're fine. Guess what I saw this morning out in the field? Let me tell you what I saw yesterday morning. Uh, out in the field behind our house, there was a beautiful mama deer with a little tiny, tiny, tiny baby fawn. It was so cute. Of course, it ran in the woods when it saw us. But this morning, I saw two turkeys. I, I'm a former biology teacher. I love wildlife and watching them. So if y'all like wildlife like me, give me some kind of happy sign, okay? All right, let me just do a little business before I move on with this. Happiness is Homemade, y'all, is on Amazon. And this is tried and true stories from my family who's lived in Alabama for over 200 years. So these are our tried and true family recipes. So y'all, if you wanna eat like we do here in Alabama, just go order it on Amazon. It'll come right to your house. And leave me a good comment. Okay, all right, thanks y'all. Let's move on cooking. All right, we got that done, and I'm gonna tell you what I do with this, with my bacon. I'm gonna get my other kitchen shears. Do y'all use kitchen shears? I do, and I'm about to cook, or as we say in the South, I'm a fixin' to cut this in half. And this is smoked bacon, and you don't have to do smoked. You can do regular, but I just like the smoky flavor that it gives to this meal. So I'm doing that, and also let's talk about these chicken breasts. Look how big they are. When I got them from the store, they were big when I pulled them out of there. And normally, I, you know, in the older days, we would cook this whole thing, but y'all, this is a lot of meat. So what I'm gonna do right now is cut it with my kitchen shears and just make them a little bit smaller. Do y'all use kitchen shears? If you do, let me know. Give me a little comment. I love my kitchen shears. And I'm gonna tell you about scissors at my house. I have two kitchen shears. And see, this is real thick right here. Whoops, let me get that off. I have two kitchen shears that I use, so I cut, you know, meat and things I need to cut here. And then I have one paper scissors that I have in a different part of the kitchen. But my scissors that I use for uh, my fabric and my sewing is in a hidden location known only to me because if you have really good sewing scissors that you don't want to get dull, it just seems like people always wanna pick those up and use them instead of everything else. So those are in my sewing machine far, far away. So people can't find them and use them. And I use those for my fabric. And I'm not being stingy, I'm just being careful with my scissors. If y'all have fabric scissors that you take care of, give me a thumbs up, because I love to, love to do crafts and things like that. All right, let's talk about this. We roll this up and we put half of the bacon on it. We nestle it down in here. And then this is what we do. We just roll it up that way, nestle them in there. That bacon is going to give such a good taste. And here's some I need to use up, so let me use these right quick. And y'all, there's a piece of skin that's just slinging around. Sorry about that. Hope that's not too offensive. I hope y'all are doing okay today. See how pretty that looks? You just kind of roll it together and you set the part where the bacon meat's on the bottom. And I've got to cut up some more chicken. 
these are really big pieces of chicken, I've got to tell you. Sometimes they're not this big when I get them, but today when I pulled them out, I was like, heavenly day, this is a ginormous chicken. But anyway, we're just going to cut them in manageable pieces because we don't wanna waste chicken. I don't like wasting food. And if somebody's gonna get it on their plate, I want them to eat it if possible. But now I'm not the food Nazi, so if they don't want it all, I understand. My dogs will eat it later. But anyway, I hope y'all are having a good day. It's pretty here today. And it's been rainy at some points and it's been overcast at some points, but right now, it's just a beautiful day. Let me get this cut. Now, I think I told you earlier, but if you cut some of this and make the pieces smaller, it doesn't have to cook as long. If you do those really ginormous pieces, you run the risk of drying out your chicken. Uh, and you also run the risk of people having these enormous pieces of chicken and they're like, I'm full and I've, I've got over half this chicken left on my plate. And you know, people are like me, I think they don't like wasting food. But anyway, we just keep doing this. Now I'm gonna try, and y'all, sometimes I get the boneless, skinless um, thighs and I wrap them up and put them in it. So I'm gonna do a few of those because some of my people like the dark meat better than the white meat. If you like the dark meat better, give me a thumbs up. If you like the white meat better, give me a heart. Let me know what you're thinking. All right, we're about to get this right here. And you want these to kind of be about the same. I'm not even gonna use all this chicken, y'all. These pieces of chicken were so big. And I'm glad, I don't like people being stingy when I'm buying chicken and y'all know how it is, but when you're feeding a lot, you gotta do what you can to take care of everybody. All right, here we go. The reason this is called Mom's Comfort Chicken is because David named it and he loves it. And whenever he needs comfort or he wants some comfort food, he wants this with mashed potatoes and biscuits. And of course some green beans or something like that. All right, I gotta wash my hands. Y'all talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right over here at my sink getting my hands cleaned up. And I did not use all this chicken. So I'm gonna have to put that up in just a minute. Okay. Talk amongst yourself. Y'all give me the weather report. How is it where you are? If the Lord's blessed you real well, y'all put it in there and tell me what he's been doing for you. We need to share that, don't we? Okay, got my chicken hands clean. Now we gotta mix up the stuff that's gonna make the gravy. The stuff that's gonna make the gravy is just cream of mushroom soup and sour cream. Y'all will not believe how good this gravy tastes on it. Uh, and it is just divine, and I'm gonna grab my little dish and we'll mix it together. Sometimes I have all this right on, right ready for you, but today, for some reason, I didn't. Okay, we're going to do a cup of sour cream, just one cup. Now, this is a 16 ounce thing, so half of this is a cup. There we go, splat. And then we're gonna use this in there. This is cream of mushroom soup. Okay, if you've made this before, let me know it. And what does your family call it? Like I said, we call it Mom's Comfort Chicken, but I don't know what y'all call it. What do you call it? Do, 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 do. What, what song do you hum in the kitchen? I like to hum in the kitchen and sing because I'm happy. Sometimes I'm not happy, but when, I, when I'm not happy or I'm worried, I pray. Do y'all pray in the kitchen like I do? Lord, I do. We got people that are sick or the country. Lord, if I start watching the news and thinking about what's going on in the country, I just get to need to pray real bad, and that's what I do. All right, y'all. I'm mixing this up. It's not glamorous. I'm just going to tell you. It is not glamorous but it is gonna be delicious. Y'all are gonna love me for this recipe. Now, this is so easy right here. Um, you just pour this over it. Make sure it's all covered and you don't want your chicken dried out. So you want the chicken coated in all of this goodness. All of this goodness right here. 
And you know, this is a really rich, rich meal. And you are gonna need, you know, some green beans and maybe some cantaloupe or some tomatoes, different things like that to go with it. And I'm gonna have cantaloupes today with our meal because my grandkids are coming and they love it. They love cantaloupes. And you know, I eat more cantaloupes than I would just because they love them so much. But cantaloupes are really good when you get a good one. If you don't know how to pick one or what to do with it, I have another video you can go look at at YouTube on what to do with a cantaloupe. And I also have some on Facebook. So if you don't know what to do with it, I'll show you. You just gotta get to the right video. All right, let me get all that good stuff off there. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is cover, oh, first of all, I gotta tell you something that we did back in the day, and I don't know if you still do it or not, but every time you would cook something like this that maybe looked a little plain on top, back in the day, my mother, my husband's mother, they would all get some paprika and sprinkle it on the top. So I'm doing paprika like they did. I love these retro recipes like this, even though it's not really retro, I've been doing it for years. But anyway, you put that on there, and y'all, there's something about that color of the paprika that just makes it so pretty when you're cooking it. And when you pull it out, it's just pretty. Uh, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. And remember, I didn't salt it because the bacon has salt in it, and so does the, um, the dried beef. Now, y'all are gonna love this stuff. Now, what we're gonna do now, because I made the chicken pieces smaller, this is gonna cook for two hours instead of three, like the book says. But if you wanted to do it in the crock pot, four hours on high or six to eight on um, uh, low. And you also need to make sure you temp it and make sure your chicken's done. All right, we gotta cover it up for an hour and a half and then take the foil off for the last 30 minutes. Okie dokie. This is what I do when I do the full. I don't want it to stick if possible. And remember, my oven was cranked up to 300 and I just pulled another one of these out so you know it's hot. <laughs> Let me put this in and I'll be right back with you and show you how pretty this stuff looks. Two hours from now, I'll have plenty of that stuff. Let me move this stuff to the side and I'm gonna show you what it looks like and how yummy it is when we, we eat some of it. So all this stuff I've touched over here. Let me wash my hands one more time. No chicken hands, right? No raw chicken hands. And y'all like my towel? I knit and crochet a lot. Uh, my grandmother taught me to crochet and my aunt taught me to knit. And this is one of those cotton uh, dishcloth slash hand towels that I made for myself. There you go, you throw it in the wash. So it, I love doing stuff like that. And when I'm watching TV or football or something like that, I'm usually knitting or crocheting. All right, let's pull this puppy over here and see what it's gonna look like. Let me get that out of the way. Wash this. All right. Okay, this is hot, hang on. Okay, this is what it looks like again. It's got all that gravy in it, and it's got that beautiful bacon. Because you take the, um, the lid off, the aluminum foil off, it's gonna really brown up that bacon, and it's gonna be so tasty. But now, I'm gonna put me some on a plate. Which one do I want? I think I want that one with the dark piece of bacon on it. Cause geez, who doesn't love bacon that's crispy? All right, now if I had some mashed potatoes, I'd be in business, but I'm gonna cook those for tonight. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Listen, this and a biscuit is all I would need, but right now I'm just going to take one bite to let you know how good it is. And tonight it will be served over mat, steaming hot mashed potatoes and ugly biscuits. And I, recipes for ugly biscuits and my mashed potatoes are all in my cookbook, Happiness is Homemade. And when you cut this open, you can tell that this chicken is not dried out. You don't wanna dry out your chicken. So you can tell it's tender 
And I'm going to cut me a little bite, and I'm gonna get a bite of everything. A little bit of the bacon, a little bit of the chicken, and a little bit of the dried beef. Okay. Of course the gravy. The gravy's just all over, oh man. I'm gonna tell y'all, I could drink that gravy, it's that good, but I'll try to restrain myself in front of you. Okay, here it is, and I do not wanna burn my mouth, so uh, I'm gonna see how hot it is. Okay, I think I can do it. All right, here we go. <laughs> that is, that is some good eating right there. Mmm. And really, this chicken's so tender, you don't even need your knife. Y'all, make you some of this. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. Mom's comfort chicken. Mm. If there's anything wrong with you, that'll cure it right there. <laughs> Get a different one. Mm -mm. I'm so glad y'all joined me today. Um, I love people and I love to cook. And so I'm glad you've joined me today. And I hope you'll all just have a really good day today and go get you the ingredients to make mom's comfort chicken because you're gonna love it. Of course, go look at my ugly biscuits and my mashed potatoes and you're gonna enjoy all that stuff together. And of course, green beans, you know, we gotta put some of those in there. I've got a video on green beans as well. So anyway, y'all cook yourself some good food. Treat yourself well. And you know, this is a little heavy calorie, so I'm gonna go exercise a little bit before I eat all this stuff tonight and welcome my family in and hear about their day at school and at work. So anyway, I'm gonna tell you what I always tell you. The good Lord loves you, and he really does. He told me to tell you that. The good Lord loves you, and I love you too. And everything's gonna be all right. If you need encouragement, you go look up my YouTube video called What a Friend. Um, all you gotta do is Google Dana Standridge, what a friend, and it'll pop up, and you can watch it, and it'll make you feel better. And tell the Lord you wanna feel better, and he'll help you feel better, okay? Put people in your path to make you feel better, and he'll help you feel better, and guide your steps. All right, I love you, and y'all have a good day, and go make you some mom's comfort chicken. Love you, bye-bye.